Hello and welcome to this video in which I'll show you how you can train your own NLP text classification system. In my case, I trained a model that can predict genres based on movie plots. So for example, here you can paste in um, a plot of a movie or write your own and then on the right you'll get the actual genre that is predicted. To demonstrate this, I just looked up some new movies um, and I'll choose Thor and copy the plots over, paste it in here and then let's see what the prediction is and we could see that the predicted genre is action and let's compare this to the actual listing on IMDb. We can see that this is a good match, at least it's one of the genres that is listed our model only predicts a single label or a single genre. In this video, I will show you the steps that I took to get to this point. So getting the data, um, pre-processing, training the model, and in the end, running the inference. All right, let's have a look at the data set that we're working with. So this is on Kaggle. As you can see, there are around 16,000 titles with the corresponding genre, plot, and poster, and we won't really need the title, but we definitely need the genre and the plot, the poster we won't need. Actually, the title might be useful for pre-processing, as you will see in the notebook later on. Yeah, so this is definitely um, pretty straightforward. So we have the plot, the genre, and you can either download the dataset manually from Kaggle by clicking on this button, or you can actually create an API token that will help you to like download it from the command line. So I also included a YouTube link to a video that describes this whole um, setting up the Kaggle API. So you can refer to this link if you want. And I'll also include the notebook in the video description. So feel free to follow along. We import Kaggle and then Download the data set, um, unzip it, so I'll just run all of these cells and talk you through the notebook. Right, um, so we end up with this movie combined CSV and then we can go on and import pandas to load the data. So here you see that there is a title, a genre, plot, poster, so exactly as on the Kaggle page, um, as I mentioned, we don't need the poster, so we'll just choose the title, genre, plots, and we have our data frame that we're going to work with. Let's now have a look at the data itself. Um, for example, we want to know maybe there are some, if there are some problems within the data. As we can see, there are duplicate titles, which is not necessarily a bad thing, since it could be that there are um, titles that released in different years. So it's probably more problematic if we have um, movie plots that are duplicate. And this is the case. So here you see there's a movie plot um, that appears nine times, seven times, six times. And um, to have a closer look at one, I picked out this one and we can see that the data frame is exactly the same for all of the entries. So we have the same title, the same genre, and the same plot. This means that this probably happens for quite a few um, movies in there, and we don't want this dupli duplicate data, so we'll remove it by using the drop duplicate function. And once we did that, we end up with 16,584 titles and their corresponding plots. So now we have only a single plot for this particular um, movie plot. Before we had like nine and this is much cleaner. So this is something we can work with. So now let's maybe have a look at the titles since there were quite a few duplicates and we can see that there are still duplicate titles. But as I mentioned earlier, this is perfectly fine if the plot is a different one. For example, we have Godzilla and there are different movie plots since there are 
quite a few Godzilla movies, um, so I don't see a problem with this. So we'll just keep them in there. Now we have, um, we'll just uh, rename the columns. So it makes it easier for training later when we're working with the data sets library. Um, so now let's have a look at the labels. So we have a drama, comedy, which are the top labels, so the most frequent ones. And then we have romance and animation uh, at the bottom. And we just get a list of all the labels and then we do a mapping from IDs to labels. So later on when we predict, we don't predict the label, but we predict an ID as you can see here. So this is our final data frame. We have a title, the text, uh, the label name, and then the corresponding label ID. So now we go on and create our train development test splits. We'll do this using the stratified splits. So that means the data is equally uh, distributed. So you don't have like some split where you have many more labels uh, of one movie genre than in another split. Um, so it keeps this ratio of the label distribution and then we can see here we import from the data sets library we import the data set class and then we create this um, data set that we work with later on so now um, let's move on to the first baseline that we're using the baseline is something that is not you know the most sophisticated model it's more of a uh, simple heuristic in this example uh, the baseline will just be a count based uh, baseline so we pretty much count the words corresponding to each of the genres and then later on the majority count will win so for this i downloaded nltk which we will use for cleaning the data let's say we have a sentence here which we tokenize um, and then we can also extract like the stop words like words such as your her and so on that don't really give us a lot of meaning so they are more um, structural words of the language but they don't really help us in figuring out you know what the genre is so um, we pretty much now look at all of these different genres and then tokenize the text so we only have like the corresponding words the, the most frequent words actually for each of these um, uh, genres so for example here you have thriller you have um, killed and please death and so on and for animation, you have Tom and Jerry. Obviously, there is some bias in the data set, as you can see. But for romance, you have words such as love and family and so on. So this will help us later to like, you know, count the words that appear in a plot and then figure out if that plot belongs to romance or to thriller or to action and so on. So now we look we will take the first ten thousand words for this so here is an example there is um this movie and this is a thriller we can now uh find that thriller has actually an overlap of 90 words um so the plots with these um word lists that we generated and therefore um this is thriller so like this plot that, that we have here will be predicted as thriller. Um, and then we do this for the whole data set of our validation data. So I just wrote this function here and then apply this to the to all of these um, plots. So now we get we have our labels here, the true labels, and then we have our um, for our count classifier, we get the predictions. And then we continue and look at how good the system performs, you know, for this baseline. So we take a look at the classification report and we get a, um, a micro F1 score of 0 0.49. Um, 
and we can actually have a look at how well this performs for each of the individual genres. So these are the predicted ones. And as we can see, it doesn't perform too bad, but it also is not really perfect. So there are quite a few confusions here. So drama is gets confused with romance, um, which might be still, you know, fine, but uh, obviously it could perform better. So let's try another model. Now we're going to use a more complex model, namely uh, the transformer model. And um, I followed along this, um, the transformers book, um, in particular chapter two. So uh, some of the code is um, taken from there and I can only recommend you to like uh, have a look at it. It also goes deeper than what I'm showing you here. So it also shows you how you can like do some error analysis and so on. Um, so let's just start with the tokenizer. So previously we had like a pretty simple tokenizer. This one is the actual tokenizer of that transformer model. Um, we're using um, Disselbert Base Uncased, which is a model that is similar to the BERT model, but has fewer parameters, but still performs pretty well. So let's try this one. And it's also computationally more efficient, so it won't, won't take uh, forever for, uh, to train on the data. So now we first tokenize our batches. Um, so our training, validation, and test data, uh, just run it over, encode the data sets. Um, so now we have our input IDs and attention masks. Um, and then obviously if you have a GPU, I would recommend you to use it since this might take quite a while uh, if you don't use a GPU. This line just includes our GPU and then we initialize the model, here is the config, the number of labels we have, and then, you know, we have our model here. So we use an auto model for sequence classification. So this is pretty much just taking the model checkpoint and then loading the corresponding model that we can now use for training our classifier. We also need to choose the metrics that we want to monitor. So here we print the accuracy and the F1 score for all of these, um, for, for our epochs. And then we also um, finally set up the training arguments for our trainer. Um, you see the model is still training right now. Um, on a single GPU, it takes around 20 minutes, I'd say, as you can see. So these are all pretty much default, um, um, values. The training epochs are four, so um, this should be fine for, for the size data set. Um, so now we have our transformers uh, model and put in the, as a trained data set, we have the encoded data set, the training split, and then for our evaluation, we have the validation split. All right, so I'll just let this train and then we have a look at the output um, and then run the in inference. All right, this has now finished training and uh, we can see the F1 score is 0 0.71, which is better than our baseline as you would have expected it. And then now you can see um, this is the confusion matrix of our transformer model. Uh, we can run the inference um, so we can predict all of our genres. Um, and now we end up with this much better looking confusion matrix. There's still some confusion for like drama and romance, I guess, since these labels are quite similar, the model tends to confuse them, which is probably also hard for a human to, you know, distinguish the two. Um, sometimes they're, they might be quite similar, quite alike. And then you can see all of these different genres, like the precision, the recall, and in the MTF1 score. And now we can have a look at the inference. I took the Thor movie plot from earlier and uh, I also did a quick search in our data and to see if maybe there's already a Thor movie in there. And this is 
uh, the case, it's probably easier for the model to learn it since the same words are, do already appear. So in this example, Jane Foster is already in there. So the model uh, already has some knowledge of Thor and can connect it to action, to the action genre. But we'll later on try out some new movies that the model hasn't seen yet. So what we do is we pass in the text, we tokenize it, and then we um, pass it through the model. And then what we end up with are the logits. We have six logits, each for one genre. And then we run the softmax uh, function and end up with a prob probability distribution. So now we have these probabilities for our genres. Now we can map this all of these positions, we can map it back. So in this case, um, this is the action genre. So this is our prediction. And now I will show you how you can actually set up an app as I showed you earlier. So here you have like um, the same interface that I showed you and you can also upload this to the Hugging Face Hub. So what you have to do here is you have to like um, import radio and then I already uploaded the model uh, earlier. So now it's already on the Hugging Face Hub. I just passed it in as the model checkpoint. Radio itself is pretty straightforward. So we just need two lines of code here to run it. So you have the interface, you choose a title and then pass in the predict function that I showed you in the other notebook. So just running the inferences, get the logits, then softmax, and then we have our prediction of the genre. Um, so what are the inputs? The input is a text, um, and then the outputs are also text. So this is all there is to it. Um, and now, as I promised, we will look at some more predictions, see if how well it actually performs. I set up this. Uh, this uh, page open. So for example, here is a movie, Mrs. Harris goes to Paris, um, comedy and drama. So let's see what the model predicts here. Oops, that's not the correct um, thing I wanted to paste in. Okay, so let's uh, see what the model predicts. And the model correctly predicts comedy. Um, this is not too bad. Let's try out something else. Um, maybe an anim animation movie. Um, all right, so I'll copy this one in. Um, and then let's have a look. Animation, that is also correct. Maybe try one more. Um, maybe uh, this one. Let's see, it says action thriller, so it should get one of them right. Um, see what it decides if it's more of a thriller so it says action okay this is looking good uh, feel free to try it out yourself um, the link uh, you can find the link here i can also put it in the description thank you for watching i hope you liked it um, maybe you can run your own uh, system you know uh, set it up maybe predict something else i think kaggle is a great resource for finding data sets so um, feel free to like uh, use the code and adapt it and uh, run it, you know, or maybe find another movie genre data set and train your own uh, genre predictor. See you next time.